I was an entirely conventional um, physician before, you know, I had my own experience bumping up against the glass ceiling of what conventional medicine has to offer. And, and you'll find most renegade doctors have sort of jumped the fence because of our own personal health experiences. You, you, you live what your patients are going through as they, you know, are just in the realm of managing symptoms and, you know, indentured servants of this system that they never feel they can get out of. And until you experience that yourself, you don't really have the motivation to question anything that you've learned. Also because of the blood, sweat and tears that you invest in a medical education and, and training. So it, it wasn't until uh, as someone specialized, believe it or not, in prescribing to pregnant and breastfeeding women. That's how much I believed in the pharmaceutical model that I was one of the first 300 so-called reproductive psychiatrists who specialized in you know, helping to manage the one in four women of reproductive age who found themselves either pregnant or looking to conceive. Uh, and it was in that context that I, um, after my own you know, childbirth experience and postpartum window, uh, you know, prescribing every day to women just like me, I began to sort of have this funny feeling that I don't think I would want to take an antidepressant as a pregnant woman. Oh, that's an inconvenient feeling, you know, let's tuck that under the rug. And it wasn't until I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which is um, an exceedingly common, especially in women, autoimmune condition um, that is particularly prevalent theoretically around 10% of postpartum women, I think it's probably far higher than is statistically documented. I was diagnosed with that about nine months postpartum on a routine physical. And of course, chalked all the symptoms that I was having of brain fog and memory issues, flat mood, a feeling of overwhelm, you know, hair and skin stuff. Uh, I chalked it up to new motherhood. You know, we love to make excuses, so we don't have to actually address what our body is trying to tell us. And uh, I, that same sort of feeling cropped up where I said, I don't want to take a prescription for the rest of my life. You know, it's fine for my patients, apparently, but it's, I don't want to do that. And so I went to a naturopath in New York, and it was with her help, um, Nicole Egenberger, that I, you know, changed my diet. I started some supplements, and I watched because I was, you know, I'm still a very numbers, science oriented kind of a, you know, left brain kind of gal. And I watched my antibodies go from the high 2000s and a TSH of 20. I watched on paper that resolution, you know, in the space of a year. I said, well, wow, <laughs> I never learned that diet matters in my, you know, Ivy League education. Um, you know, the average medical student doesn't have more than one hour of nutrition education. And it's really like a window dressing. It's like, by the way, if your patient's drinking like a 32 ounce Pepsi every day, probably just tell them maybe they shouldn't do that. That's literally the extent of it. Uh, and I also didn't learn that autoimmune conditions, chronic conditions could be put into remission through lifestyle change. And so that just because of my personality, my Irish Italian roots, I, you know, I had like a temper tantrum and I was like, what? <laughs> There's so much rage, you know, about how much I'd invested and sacrificed, you know, to, to learn only part of the story. And so I went back to the books. I'm very comfortable on PubMed.gov and reading primary papers and knowing how to interpret them. And, and that's what I did near obsessively for the ensuing years that I unpacked everything I assumed to be true. You know, birth control is every woman's, you know, right. Statins should be in the water. You know, antidepressants are, you know, the kindest thing we can do for pa patients and on and on and on. Antibiotics and acid blockers and everything that I just sort of assumed didn't have a dark side. I went and, and investigated it. And what I found was, you know, really shocking um, at worst and interesting at best and really became the foundation for a very new way of of practicing medicine.